Hello guys, it's Fred here from Pro Tennis Trader. I hope you're well. Now it's day one of Wimbledon 2021, and so I thought I'd do a video on how I approach the first round matches of Grand Slam tournaments and the things that I look out for in terms of potentially good trading matches, and also some other points to consider when facing a huge number of matches in first rounds such as Wimbledon. If you follow my channel before, you'll know that I've done a number of videos on the specific aspects of match selection and what stats I use. So I won't be covering that in this video. This will be more focused on how to approach first rounds of Grand Slams. So first of all, let's kick things off by taking a look at the matches going on today. And as you can see, there is an enormous amount of tennis going on. In fact, there are 128 players in the first round of Wimbledon. And so usually there are 64 matches going on in the singles draw. And of course, due to the scheduling and the nature of tennis, a lot of these matches will be pushed on to day two, especially if there are delays such as rain. So the first thing I'd like to cover here is the pricing of matches. Now pricing is always important as it indicates to me straight away whether there will be a likelihood of entering any trades and indeed what type of strategy I will potentially be adopting. Now in terms of WTA matches, the pricing and price movement potential and therefore the potential for swings is no different from any other normal tournament. This is because they stick to the usual best of three sets. However, the rules for this are slightly different in ATP matches at Grand Slams because of course it is played over the best of five sets. Therefore, in most cases the price movement will be smaller. Now let's take an example of the match between Kudler and Fokina. Now here the prices are very evenly matched and in a normal ATP tournament, by which I mean not a Grand Slam, this could potentially have had huge price movement and lots of value in the second set no matter who won the first set. But if both players are still relatively equal in the second set, then it is unlikely that we'll get much value in the second set and often have to wait until a player goes two sets up to see some decent price movement. So although this may be a very nice trading match under normal circumstances, and quite possibly in the situation if one player does go two sets up, it is not an ideal selection for an ATP trading match in a Grand Slam. Ideally, the pricing scenario that I often prefer in Grand Slams is when there is more of a gap in the pricing, such as in the Leovic versus Simon match, which is priced at 256 and 158, and also the Fuxovic versus Sinner with similar pricing, so that there is more chance of being able to get involved with decent value in the second set. Now, if you are able to get involved in the second set, then this also has the added advantage of being able to redeem any losses you might have incurred later on in the match. Now the second consideration when trading Grand Slams is the fact that this is an enormous stage and can be very daunting for young or inexperienced players. Now granted, every now and then players like Corey Goff will come along and do very well and be completely unfazed by it all. But other players will struggle with the enormity of the tournament. And this can often present some potentially good opportunities for trading. And in particular, if we look at the match between Foxvix and Sinner, now, Sinner is priced as the clear favourite due to an extremely good previous year. But if you look more closely at his experience on grass and the fact he's just 19 years old, then this can often play in our favour. And in fact, if you delve even deeper, we discover that in Sinner's first Wimbledon in 2019, he failed to qualify, losing to an unseeded player that could potentially still be in his mind. So... Matches where there is strong but inexperienced players or a player with a strong record, say for example on clay but not on grass, are worth keeping an eye out for. Now the third consideration to take into account is the fact that there is just so much tennis going on. So you can see how many matches are going on and given the fact that there are so many courts at Wimbledon, it is too easy to try and trade too many matches through FOMO, which is the fear of missing out and of course, this is to the detriment of other trading matches. So personally, I would spend time before each round picking out which matches to trade and try as best you can to plan a schedule. Now obviously due to the nature of tennis, I realize it's not quite as straightforward as this as times change a lot, but you are still able to draft a rough schedule to ensure that you are not trading too many games that overlap. Now it's always best to focus on a smaller number of matches where you can spend time analysing what is going on, and particularly during the match and during the first set. 
and physically watch how the players are performing on a live stream. Now it's too easy to get drawn in to some radical price shift over on another court and want to get involved in the trading that. When actually, it is because the player may be off par or maybe even have picked up an injury. So my advice would be to stick to a few matches which you have fully analysed and concluded that they do have the potential to be good trading matches. Now my fourth point is this, first round matches in any tournament and particularly at Grand Slams such as Wimbledon often bring up big surprises. Now over at the FTW News, they've done an article on the 2019 Wimbledon tournament where just in two days, nine of the top players were knocked out. So in day one, Venus Williams was famously knocked out by Corey Guff. Naomi Osaka was knocked out by Putintseva if I've said that correctly. Zverev was knocked out by Vesely. And this is a surprising one, which a lot of people would have forgotten, but Tsitsipas got knocked out in the first round of the 2019 Wimbledon. And Gael Monfils. Now in day two, Dominic Thiem was knocked out. Shapovalov, Garbine Muguruza, and also Maria Sharapova, all knocked out in day two at Wimbledon. Now these situations can often present good opportunities. But I would say just be aware of the fact that Wimbledon draws in a lot of money and is a huge stage. So there may, for example, be a top player who has maybe a niggling injury or some other personal issue, but wants to go ahead anyway, despite being not up to the task. And so these can present good opportunities for some almighty upsets if you are there to see it. So I would say it's always worth keeping an eye on the tennis chatter and any leaks that may come from players' camps, which may indicate any issues going on. Now, as you can see from 2019, these upsets really do happen, and often there can be good reasons for this. For example, if we see the issues Osaka had going on, this goes some way to explaining this first round upset. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like and visit my channel and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to begin your journey into tennis trading, then please visit protennistrader.com where you can sign up to my free online video course, An Introduction into Tennis Trading. I'll see you soon.